So one of my favorite things in Gary's Mod is pitting other NPCs against each other and just watching the crazy bloodbath that ensues. However, unfortunately, a lot of other creators have decided to do this and in my opinion it's kind of lessened the novelty of it. So I've strayed away from NPC fights if you guys haven't noticed. But for those of you out there that love to see NPCs duke it out, this is going to be the mod for you, and it's a really cool mod. This is the Auto NPC Championship, and it's extremely simple. All you have to do is open up the console, type this command in, press enter, and then simply add the NPCs that will be in the match. But first, let's clean up this mess. Fantastic, now that we've cleaned it up, all we gotta do is spawn in the NPC. Now it's important to understand that there's going to be a lot of fights taking place, so for the sake of simplicity, for the first fight, we're only going to use about three NPCs, so we're going to go with the poison zombie, and then for the humans, we're going to go with, uh, what do you guys say we go with a rebel? And then for the combine, let's go with the combine elite. Now that we have those three NPCs put in place, we're simply going to go back into here, re-put in the same command, and let the fights begin. Now it's going to create these automatically generated fights between two NPCs at a time. Now the cool thing is, is that even if they're on the same faction, they will still fight each other. It automatically does that stuff for you. But we can see here that this rebel is definitely doing his best against a combine elite. Unfortunately he lost, but now we're already on to the next fight and the combine has to fight, well, a poison zombie, which is a pretty beefy zombie that can very easily take you down in just a few hits. Although the poison zombie is very slow and the combine elite is definitely taking advantage of that. What happens when he throws a poison head crab right in his face? And there goes all of his health. If he gets hit one more time, he is a goner. And he gets right up in the zombie's face. Is that a good idea? No, it was not. The poison zombie wins. Now it's on to the rebel. And here we can see pretty much, well, the same thing is happening. He's throwing the head crabs. The head crabs are jumping, taking the NPC's health all the way down to one. Now be mindful, guys, that uh, these NPCs don't have the HEV suit, so they don't have the neurotoxin defense that Gordon has, which means their health is not going to regenerate when it gets down to one. And she better do something quick. That was suggestive. All right, so there we go. Once you have all the fights done, once each NPC has individually fought every other NPC, their scores are tallied up and you get the results in the console. So we can see here, you get plus one points when you win and negative one when you lose. Unfortunately, the rebel lost, well, more than they won, so they're negative two. We can see that the combine elite is at zero, so pretty much didn't go anywhere, and the poison zombie is at a score of two, which means the poison zombie wins the championship. And of course, who said you had to stick with standard map layouts for this? I went ahead and kind of made my own little battleground. Don't really know what this is all about, but it gives NPCs areas to hide. Now, whether or not they'll use those hiding spots, well, I don't know if nodes really know how to work around this unless they're baked into the map, but let's go ahead and go with it anyway, just to get some diversity here. For the NPCs for this fight, I'm thinking we should go a bit harder than we did. Definitely gonna throw in a hunter. And you can also add in any NPCs you want. So that even means, yes, the plush. But the plush is going to destroy everything. So maybe we shouldn't put it in. Eh, screw it anyway. We're gonna put it in. And just for the lols, we're gonna put in the Demogorgon. Uh, I don't know why. I've never watched Stranger Things. But let's just go with it. And now we're gonna put in some pretty beefy NPCs from the Resistance here. I'm thinking either Dog or Alex. I'm gonna put Alex. And then for this, we're gonna definitely put in the Antlion Guard. I would love to see how that works. All right, so that is a lot of NPCs, and these fights are going to take quite a long time. So let's go ahead, let's get this started, and let's see who wins. First things first, we have Alex versus the Antlion Guard. Not a good fight for Alex, unless she really knows how to use that shotgun. Now, it's important to note that I chose Alex for one reason. She has an incredible amount of health. Sadly, not enough, though. And now, it's the Demogorgon. And the Demogorgon got wrecked. Now, it's Alex versus the Demogorgon. And unfortunately, she spawned in the worst spot. Here, Alex, let me help you out there. It, it doesn't really matter, because the Demogorgon is so fast that it's going to be on her ass anyway. But she is definitely using that shotgun to full effect. 
Now we're on to the Ploosh versus the Antlion Guard. This is going to be an epic fight. By the way, guys, I did freeze all these props down, so if they move, well, that just shows the immense power of some of these NPCs. All right, and Ploosh is really giving it to this Antlion Guard. Now it's Alex versus the Ploosh. Now you guys are gonna notice, wait, how come a few of these NPCs are fighting multiple times at once? And again, each NPC should, in theory, fight each other NPC, which means there is not a match that gets left out. So everyone gets a fair shot. That means that you get a proper score at the end. It's kind of like the format I used to use in my old NPC versus NPC videos. So I really do like this. All right, the hunter died instantly. Now it's the hunter versus Alex. Oh, Alex, I feel so bad for you. That couch is coming in clutch though, protecting her from all those flechettes. And now she gets a chance to really just wail on this thing with the shotgun. However, the hunter has repositioned. And it's not looking good for Alex. So it's interesting how the hunter is using the obstacles to kind of maneuver around this NPC. It's also interesting to note how the hunter kind of keeps its distance. Definitely a good idea against Alex here, but Alex does have regenning health, which means every second the hunter's not attacking is another second Alex gets an advantage. All right, we are definitely going a little too far from the fight. Don't know why the hunter is so disinterested in Alex, especially when you consider what happened in Half-Life 2. I mean, Alex really just kind of gets away from the flechettes, heals, and then goes back in. So this might be a very long fight, but it's definitely looking like Alex has the upper hand here, which I did not expect. All right, so I've went ahead and sped up time just to make this a bit more interesting because they are really just kind of playing footsies with each other, not doing a whole lot, keeping their distance. Alex has a shotgun, so she can't really do a whole lot. Did he just clip through that wall I put down? Anyway, Alex is throwing in a few shots here and there. The hunter is honestly not doing anything because she's healing off all the damage. All right, so interestingly, we got a timeout. Didn't even think a timeout was a thing. And I don't know what's going on there, but the Demogorgon definitely won that. Now it's the Ploosh versus the Hunter, and this, again, should be a pretty high octane match. The Ploosh is known for jumping all over the place. Definitely not as fun to fight in the actual game, by the way. All right, and that is it. No more fights. Let's see who took the final championship. And, well, I think you guys knew where this was going. We have the Ploosh at four, which is the most and is the winner of this championship. Next up, we have the Antlion Guard with a score of two and the Demogorgon with a score of zero. Interesting. So the Demogorgon must have lost a few because it definitely did win some, but then it lost that score when it lost those rounds. Then we have the Hunter with negative three and then Alex with as well negative three. Kind of a sad score. I think that timeout definitely did kind of screw both of them. But like I said, you can choose NPCs of the same faction. So if you ever wanted to figure out which of the Combine is the best, guess what? You can totally do that. And again, you don't have to change any settings. Just simply put it on and watch the fight ensue. So now we can see we have the Prison Shotgunner versus the Metro Police Officer, and well, the Shotgunner won. By the way, if you guys want to know how they're doing these crazy animations and how they can even use pistols, there is a mod that I took a look at. I'll put it in the top right corner. It's an amazing combine overhaul, and it kind of breathes some new life back into the aging combine. All right, now we have the Combine Guard versus the Metro Police Officer. Although one has a pistol and one has a SMG, so this might actually be good for the officer here. Although he is shooting like a goddamn stormtrooper and missing almost every shot, so maybe not. Is there a difference between health? Yes, there is. So that could be the difference here. Alright guys, let's be honest. They are both shooting like absolutely amateurs. But we got the combat soldier to win. I was going to move him because I think he was stuck on this body here. I definitely should have cleaned up a little bit. Oh, and now we have the elite. But the shotgunner is smart getting in close. However, it is not enough. That is something else to take note is the distance that certain NPCs spawn from. Because again, you know, the shotgun is going to be better close up. If he spawns far away, that might be a bit of a disadvantage. And I believe you can change the parameters for how far they spawn. All right, the energy ball bounced right off of him like nothing. What an absolute tank. But he is fighting an AR2. I don't think, yeah, yeah, there's no way he's going to win. 
All right, prison shotgunner versus the shotgun soldier. Oh, it's the fight of the shotgunners. Although they're <laughs> <laughs> They'd rather just beat the living shit out of each other. That is so hilarious. All right, we can see the roller coaster cart really coming into play as a good defensive measure. However, this dude's packing the shoddy and he just got in close, so. Oh, wow, he's actually using this to protect himself. Although it's also blocking his shots. But it doesn't matter because he did win. So we can see that the shotgun is not everything close up. Once again, it's going to be a brawl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is so funny to watch. Alright, dude, you better get, like, hella behind cover right now. Oh, look at that! He's actually using some of the cover, I think. At least he was. I don't know what the hell he's doing now. Trying to get in close, because again, that shotgun is going to be useless, unless he does. Oh, here we go. Oh, and I think that this square protected him, but there's a grenade! Oh no! Oh, and the grenade is going to be it. Alright, now we have the prison shotgunner versus the... Combined prison soldier. Why are there so many combined soldiers? All right, my dude I don't know how to tell you this, but there's a fountain in your way All right, just for the sake of this fight. I'm going to move the fountain over here just so they can shoot at each other, but It could be anyone's game. I mean the SMG again is not very accurate I think the pistol might even be more accurate. We can even see it's already doing a bit of damage. Come on, man Are you gonna bring it in? Are you gonna let this guy make you look like an idiot? And you, are you gonna let that beefcake beat you with a pistol? You got an SMG, man, use it. All right, we're down to the wire. It's one more bullet and the SMG Metro Police Officer wins. But now we got the Combine Prison versus the Combine S. Once again, pistols. Love this weapon. All right, you guys get the gist though. So for now on, I'm just going to keep it at times three so we can get a good appreciation of just how these fights take place. And it's kind of easier to see the action take place too, because I mean, look, they're lobbing grenades back and forth. They're using everything at their disposal. It's pretty cool to see. And this really is just the, t uh, and this really is just the tip of the iceberg. You can again use any NPCs from any faction to fight each other to see really which one is the best. And you could do it on any map too. I just chose Big City because, well, well, I like Big City, but you could choose any map. In fact, I'd recommend a map more suited for NPC fights. All right, now we're down to the elites and we can see that the drink machine is really coming into play here, blocking both shots from each other. In fact, I don't think they're even doing any damage. So uh, yeah, I probably should just move it. All right, I think we're down to the last final battles here. Nope, that was the last one. And of course it came down to shotguns. Let's see who's the best combine overall guys in terms of soldiers. So in number one, I think we all knew this. It's the combine elite with five wins. Definitely a pretty impressive score. Next up, we have the shotgunner, um, the prison shotgunner in particular, with one. Everyone else got negative, so definitely probably got owned by the elite. But we can see that the worst out of all of them is the shotgun soldier. I guess he got stuck on a few props or something, but I thought the shotgun would be good. So there you guys have it. A really cool mod to make your own. NPC championships with pretty much no effort on your part except for just choosing the combatants. I would love to see what you guys suggest down below if you have any suggestions. Links would be in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this until the end, and until next time, farewell.